Uh, hi everyone, I'm Jennifer and I'm here to talk to you about Jupyter Notebooks. So, um, a fun fact is that Jupyter Notebooks actually used to be called IPython, but then several years ago there was a great split and now they're called Jupyter Notebooks. <laughs> That's all you need to know for this uh, talk. And so, they're really great because one, they're open source, so they're free to use and there's really great documentation for them. And um, it's supported by the community, so like every year there's like new little features that are coming out. And I know an open issue on their GitHub right now is the ability to add GIFs to their notebooks. And I will show you the demo later of that. Or not of adding GIFs, but using a notebook. And they're also really great for literate programming, which just means that um, the code spot blocks are interspersed with human-friendly text. So you can have some Python code, and you can also have Markdown in the same notebook. So if you ever use like a note-taking um, note tool like Quiver, it's kind of similar, except you can actually run the code. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> and there's also no need to uh, rerun code. So if you make like a code snippet in one block, and you, it's a function, for example, and you decide to call that function from another block, they don't have to be in the same block. And I will also demonstrate that in the demo. And there's also a lot of support for many different languages, although Python was the first. And I did check out the JavaScript kernel, which is the interpolator for JavaScript for the notebook. And it's not great, so I'm not going to demo that today, but um, I will demo Python. And you can find the full list uh, at the link below. And so um, I would also, I also wanted to cover what they're not so great for. They're really not great for production, so you can't like, um, deploy it in any way, not that I would know how. <laughs> and, uh, and as I mentioned, the support tends to vary for different languages. And this is an example of what a notebook would generally look like. And this one I, um, is um, a screenshot of one of the examples they have on their blog. But um, so this is an example of a code block above. And you can write some code. And then you can write some markdown. So like. A like a human-friendly comment, and then some more code with a um, couple of data visualizations. Yeah, and another fun feature that I mentioned, like they have open issues that um, they're fine now supports uh, regular expressions. So you can search for things using, that has the word like red in them. Yeah, and now it's time for a demo. And assuming um, I uh, downloaded Anaconda, which is a distribution for Python, and it also includes Jupyter Notebook. But once you have that running on your computer, you can just type in Jupyter Notebook. Go. And you should also type it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this is what uh, should start up once you type that in. And our demo is here. And as I mentioned, so if you have like some simple function like um, this greeting function. <laughs> oh, sorry. And you can input something like amazing. And you should have this greeting, but you can also delete this. And it should rerun it, even though it's in a separate uh, code cell. And um, if you also double click on this, this is what the markdown looks like. And um, you can just do like basic markdown. Yeah. And also demo some like uh, data visualizations and see, you can see how that looks here. And I'm just going to demo the Titanic data that you can find on Kaggle or like many other sites. It's like a pretty common data set. And the packages I'm using are just NumPy and Pandas and um, the IPython uh, built-in display, which just makes the display in line with the code cells. And stops running. And you can also display like the first couple of uh, lines of data. And this is generally what it looks like. And you can see that it's like pretty nicely formatted. And you can also like do some data manipulation within the cell. And this is just um, 
the first couple of lines of people who actually survived from the data set, or survived the Titanic of being, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and this is what um, a couple of data visualizations would look like. Yeah, and if you want to like add a cell, let me delete this one. If you want to delete a cell, you can do that. But if you want to add a cell, you can just like um, add the or click on the plus sign, and then you can just write whatever code you want, and you can rerun it. And um, if you want to share this with someone, you can also go to file, and you can download it as um, a couple of different formats, like HTML. So And it should be nicely rendered like that. <coughs> yeah. And um, there's also, I have a couple of resources to learn more. And um, this one's just a quick start. So there's like a couple of things that I didn't quite cover. You can learn more about the markdown and what are, like, what are languages are supported. And some interesting Jupyter notebooks. There's like, it's a pretty good gallery, so I would recommend that you check it out. And yeah, they also have, um, you can also try Jupyter if you don't want to go through the trouble of actually um, downloading all this uh, Anaconda stuff. And of course it is runnable. It just takes a while. Oh, there's a warning, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's all I have for you today. And thank you for listening. <laughs>